Insects and other related arthropods, like ticks and mosquitoes, can transmit pathogens causing diseases. These animals are also known as vectors, and their control is an important part of reducing vector-borne disease risk. Integrated vector management, known for short as IVM, is one strategy for controlling these vectors. You may be familiar with integrated pest management, also known as IPM. IPM programs combine multiple control tactics to manage pests in ways that are effective, environmentally friendly, and economical. IVM programs are similar, but are directed specifically at vector control. Let's go over some of the key components of an IVM program. These components are knowledge of the vector's biology, monitoring of vectors, and the use of different control tactics. The first component of an IVM program is understanding the vector's biology and behavior. Knowing what vector species you are targeting, when and where you can find them, and how they behave can help you develop effective management programs. For example, most ticks in the Northeast are active in the spring and summer. Therefore, control methods against ticks will be most effective during these seasons instead of in the winter when they are less active. Another component of IVM is the continuous monitoring and inspection of property for vector presence. By continually monitoring for vectors, you can evaluate if current control strategies are working and make changes as needed. For example, let's say that you are trying to control mosquitoes around your home. One step you may take to control the mosquitoes is applying a pesticide. When following an IVM plan, after applying the pesticide, you should check to see if you still have mosquitoes, evaluate if the control method worked, and make changes if needed. The final and most important component of a successful IVM program is the use of multiple control tactics. Integrating multiple control tactics together is what puts the integrated in IVM. There are four main types of tactics that can be used as part of an IVM program cultural control, mechanical or physical control, biological control, and chemical control. Using several of these tactics to control a vector, rather than just one, is an important part of creating an IVM plan. To get an idea of what this looks like, let's go back to our mosquito control example. If you are trying to control mosquitoes around your house, you may try using multiple tactics at once. This can include eliminating water where mosquitoes can lay eggs, a type of mechanical control, and using a pesticide, a type of chemical control. How each of these tactics can be used and combined with others will be covered in the rest of the Safer Spaces series. The development of an IVM plan should focus on control strategies that are the least invasive to the environment and try to minimize higher risk methods like chemical pesticides. However, if pesticides are used as part of an IVM plan, it is important to thoroughly understand when and how to apply them based on the biology of the target vector and to follow all label instructions. By understanding the vector's biology, monitoring for vector presence, and using multiple control strategies, you can maximize your control efforts and minimize environmental risk. Combining different tactics in ways to manage vectors and reduce vector-borne disease risk is what defines IVM.